In this video, you will learn 11 plus nonverbal reasoning type 13, fold along the line. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to master 11 plus exam techniques to land in your dream grammar school, start right now by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's have a look at this example. And in this example, we have a piece of paper and this paper has been folded along this fold line. So our job is to find how this paper would look like once it has been folded along this fold line. And we need to find whether it's A, B, C, or D. If you notice, the fold line is going vertical through this paper. So now, since we know how the paper has been folded, it has been folded vertically, we have to find the direction in which the paper has been folded. If you notice in A, B, C, and D, you can see that these two flaps we have right here appear to be on the other side of the fold line. So it's always on the left hand side of the fold line. So this means the folds are being folded like this. So these two flaps we have right here are folded from right to left. Because that's why they appear on the other side of the fold line. Since we now know the direction in which the paper has been folded, we can now start by eliminating the options that won't be the answer. If you have a look at both of these flaps, you can see that they're both the same size. They're both the same length. Because they're both the same length, if we find an option which both of these flaps are different length to each other, then we cross the option off. So if you have a look at an A, you can see that the bottom one is a bit longer than the top one. So this means they're different length, which means we can cross off A. So let's move to B. In B, you can see that the bottom one is a bit shorter than the top one. So this means they're different length, which means we can cross off B as well. If you have a look in C, you can see that these both are the same length and the same size. So that means we can keep C for now. And let's move to D. In D, you can see that these two are the same length again. So this means out of the four options we started with, we managed to cross off A and B. So now we're left with C and D. And to find the answer now, we just have to use our common sense. If you have a look at both of these flaps we have right here, and if you fold these flaps over, you can kind of see that the paper is not going to be too small, but at the same time, it's not going to be bigger than this one. But if you have a look and see, these two flaps we have right here, once they're folded, are way too small. So that means that cannot be our answer. Because if you do fold these two papers over, they would definitely won't be this small. But if you have a look in D, you can see that this size is a bit more reasonable to this one because once the paper has been folded, obviously this flap is obviously going to get smaller, but it's not going to get too small. So this means our answer to this question is D. If you guys do want more resources, I've got the link in the description, so go check that out. Now, let's have a look at this example. And in this example, we have this paper being folded diagonally along these two points. It's crossing these two points and it's going diagonally. So we need to find whether the answer is going to be A, B, C, or D. And as you guys could see, because the paper has been folded diagonally like this, it means the paper must have a diagonal edge right here. It must have a diagonal edge right here. Because it's folded like this, it will definitely have a diagonal edge. So this means if you don't find an option in which there isn't a single diagonal edge in the option, then we cross the option off. In A, we have one diagonal edge, so A is fine. And we can move into B. In B, we do not have a single diagonal edge. So this means we can go ahead and cross off B. So let's move into C. In C, we still have a diagonal edge. And in D, we have a diagonal edge. But if you have a look at the direction in the diagonal is, you can see that the fold is going this way. It's going from the bottom left to the top right. So this means there must be a diagonal edge like this. But instead, there's a diagonal edge in the opposite way. In D. Because the diagonal edge is in the opposite direction and is pointing the wrong side, we can go ahead and cross off D. So now we're left with A and C. Some of you may be able to find the answer, what it is right now, because if you have a look at this piece of the paper we have right here, you can see that it has a flat edge. And in A, this piece is right here, and in A, it also has a flat edge. But over in C, it does not have a flat edge, and instead, it has a diagonal edge. Because it has a diagonal edge and not a flat edge, we can cross off C. 
So now we're only left with A, but let's just check A to be sure. We said that we must have a diagonal edge. There is one right here. We talked about the direction being from the bottom left to the top right. And yes, it is bottom left to the top right. And we said that this bit of the paper sticking out must have a flat edge. And yes, it does. So this means our answer to this question is A. Now to learn more nonverbal reasoning types, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous type, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.